Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. So, um, welcome everyone to the second section we have here. And um, today we have Tune, and he'll be talking on people with multi tenant motic and how to avoid them. So, just like a brief background and intro on who Tune is. So, Tune is a digital strategist from Belgium, and he has been using motic since he started working with Drop Solid. And he loves to define, strategize, and analyze the needs of companies while creating successful marketing automation strategies. So he's going to talk more on the pitfalls you can encounter with multi tenant motic and how you can avoid them. So over to you, Tone. I'll be yes. on the stage now. Thank you for the introduction. I'll start by sharing my screen. Okay. Um, first of all, thank you everyone and welcome to uh, the presentation. Indeed, today I will talk a bit more about how multi, uh, the, of the pitfalls from multi-user motics and how we can um, avoid them. First of all, let's start off with a tool I did not read. Um, we are DropSolid. We created the DXP for a Flemish government organization in Belgium. And this is how today we will talk about this is how we built it and what we learned from it. Um, as mentioned, my name is Ton. I'm a marketing automation specialist and strategist at DropSolid. I'm always DropSolid. We're a Belgian-based company. Um, we've existed for nine years and are mostly based in Ghent, for the people who know Ghent. Um, we with, are with around 90 people, have partners in three continents. Um, and our main goal is to make complex marketing technologies accessible for companies and organizations. Um, our main product, and this is also interesting for today, is our DXP. It's an open di digital experience platform. And this is also what we've created for this client or for the Flemish government organization in this case. What is DXP? It's an open digital experience platform. So everything is open source and it consists out of a couple of things. So first of all, we have our content management system, marketing automation system, that's Matic, of course, and our CD, uh, customer data platform or our CDP for personalization. And in this case, we also added a them. What are those components? Because they can be a little a bit fluffy. Um, the first of all, uh, our CMS, uh, we use Drupal, uh, especially layout builder. Um, it's easy for clients to create uh, layouts in just a few clicks, easy integrations with Motic, with um, every tool you really want, saves times with templates, you can build practice best practices on your web pages, um, exactly what you would expect. Um, and once built, you can expand it. And it's really just a great tool um, for a CMS um, in general. Then marketing automation. I think most of you know what uh, marketing automations or Mautic is used for. The main goal is to engage visitors in long-term relationships by getting them to know better uh, automation uh, to increase customer loyalty, better leads, stay relevant. You can really do it across all channels. And the main reason why we use Mautic is one, because it's open source, and two, uh, it works out of the box with Drupal. The third component is our CDP. It's an open source personalization tool. Uh, and what it really does is it takes all the information that you can gather, for example, the information from Mautic, the information from your website, and it couples them uh, in the tool for universal profile. That information can then be used to further personalize the experiences. And lastly, we have the DAM. It's a digital asset management, and it's a tool that um, organizes, stores uh, all your digital assets in general. Now, uh, to the case, uh, this case I will be talking to you about is um, about the Flemish government organization. Um, I will not be saying the name, but I will give you a broad, a broad idea of who they are. Um, this Flemish government organization has around 15 websites, 300 employees in total. They are active in um, 20 countries. They have 10 departments um, spread over those different counties, and they have uh, around 50 employees working actively on Motic. So this is really one of our first big Motics in this case um, to this level. And what was the challenge for this government? Uh, the government and public institutions want to start investing more in personalized digital experience because they want to offer added value to entrepreneurs, tourists, or everyone who is important to them. And by... Eh, Organizations that succeed in connecting with their stakeholders also through digital means will reap the benefits through higher engagement between stakeholders and organizations, which translates into higher service satisfaction. Um, 
especially for this case, so we'll be talking about the Nordic part of it, the purpose of this setup that we wanted to do was to have limited access for local marketeers, so they can only access their own emails, forums, segments, reporting, and uh, particularly contacts. So each marketeer from each department got a, an account. So for example, you will have an account for the French marketeers, the Spanish marketeers, the German marketeers. And the most important thing that French, the French marketeers could only see the French uh, content that was being created. This is mainly to avoid local marketeers to send emails to the wrong audience or uh, updating, deleting contacts, they don't know. And this was a quite a big uh, project, so I would like to share our approach with this. Um, I think as of every project, we started off with a kickoff meeting where we really listened and discussed with the client uh, about the migration from their current marketing automation platform, the needs that they have with Motic, what do they want to do, what's important for them, and also give them some inspiration. Then we had two workshops where we discussed the mail strategy and the plan of attack for this project. And in the second one, we discussed the, mod, the, the data model that would be used in Mautic, templates, roles, double opt-in training, and everything else. The final phase, we presented a plan of attack and a detailed planning that looked something like this. Because there were a lot of people involved in this, we created a planning in uh, our Confluence page where date per date the client could see um, what we are working on at the moment. Because there is a large migration, because you have all the different departments that need to come in one modic, it's really necessary to have a clear planning that everyone knows what they need to do. And it's an old tool, so it's also important that we created a briefing for the different departments, how everything would look like, um, how does the migration look like, when can they actively start using their Mautic instance. Um, we started training the clients in small groups of five because that just works better for us. Um, we started creating the different templates and also created a migration checklist that could be handy for everybody. I think when you do a migration from another platform to Mautic or yeah, I think immigration in general, this is a handy thing to have to decide uh, to know that you've migrated everything. And now the setup. Um, as I said, the purpose was to have limited access for the local marketeers. Um, so we created two types of roles within Mautic. The first one being the admin role, the admin uh, to department owners uh, for this case um, have access to everything except API settings, plugins, and um, they can change user permissions. Otherwise they could change their own permission and that's not what we want. Um, and then we have the department owners that only have access to their own emails, form segments, reporting. Um, I think you get the message from there. And uh, this looked something like this in Mautic. So we changed the settings that they have um, view own settings, edit own, create, delete own, and publish own. So this would allow them to only access their own uh, products uh, or assets that they have created. Another thing that was needed was a custom preference center because the preference center that was in Mautic at the moment was not enough for them. For example, they have a department in Spain that has segment one, two, and three, and they have a department in France that has segment four, five, and six. So um, all those six segments would um, appear in the department of Spain, but there would be French translations in it, and it would just cause havoc and people wouldn't know uh, what was correct for them. So we started developing and created sub-reference centers in Mautic. As you can see, um, you could find them here under uh, the components. There was a sub-reference center. And in here, we could create different preference center for each department, just by creating a name um, that you still know which preference center it was, a token that can be later used in the emails, and a landing page uh, that's already set as a preference center to link it to. This is quite basic, but the cool thing here is that now if, if you want to choose um, in which segment someone is in, when you um, enable available in preference center, yes, in a segment, you get an extra drop-down menu with the different preference centers that are available. So this gives you the possibility to say, okay, uh, segment one, two, and three is for department A, segment three, four, and five is for department B. And so everyone could have a separate preference center with only their segments um, active in it. And this is how it looks in the email. You can just uh, select the preference center. So we set up everything up uh, and we created a plan of attack. We had our planning, people were started getting trained and then we started testing the setup. And there were quite some interesting things that we saw. 
uh, obviously we started off with some test cases uh, to make sure that in the way we set Matic up with the different user roles, we need to, to make sure that everything was correct. So we tested things like as a department, I want to create contact manually. Um, I want to only see the forms that I have created. Um, I want to create a company manually. Um, I want to see the activity of a company that I've created and all the components basically in Mautic should be covered by this. I think in total we had around 60 tests um, that we um, completed, but we expected good results, but it was not that ideal. Um, we created an Excel sheet with all the tests uh, where we could measure if they failed or um, something we have a question about or they passed. And in total, I think around 74 0.5% of our tests failed and 45.9% passed. So more than half of our tests have failed, and which means that the setup that we wanted to do with the separate content was not um, ideal and it did not really work. And there were some notable issues. These were some things that, for example, were not possible. Um, for example, as a department, you couldn't create your own company. You couldn't cr uh, clone a form. Um, but let me get a little bit deeper in this. Um, for example, one of the biggest problems was uh, that segments are visible to anyone. This is because um, when you go to the settings uh, and to uh, the user settings in what to segments, you have um, the rights to view other, edit other, delete others, or full rights, but there were no view own. This was just not available here. So every department could see each other's segments. Also, you couldn't clone a form with limited rights. Only people with full access on forms were able to clone, which is kind of weird that this was the case, because why wouldn't you be able to uh, clone a form? Because all the other user settings were correct in here. But that was yeah, a big problem, because most of the time people just clone forms because it's kind of the same form, but that wasn't possible here. Um, companies were also just not visible um, in the in the to the departments even though the the rights of the companies were set up correctly in the user account but we couldn't see them anywhere so they had no access to companies in general and uh, also the same uh, that we saw with prefer a bit uh, segments all landing pages were also visible to all departments so i think in one more and this is one of the more notable ones, I think. In Mautic, you can set a unique identifier. Um, for example, most of the time and standard, it's the email that would be the unique identifier. But this is not unique. You create, mul you can create multiple e people with the same email address, which is not ideal because that way you can create seven times uh, the same user seven times. As you can see here, my user was already five times in here and that's also not ideal because a user needs to be unique uh, because otherwise the tracking of the user will not be correct because they will be tracked on different um, screens and so you will not have a complete user profile here so what is the solution here and what did we do um having having the local access for the the limited access for the local marketeers was not an option anymore because this was just simply not included in Matic out of the box, and there was much to work. Uh, there was much work to do before we could fix this, and it was not feasible because we had a really tight deadline of one month to migrate, uh, set up, develop, migrate, and do everything for this project. So, this is what an option. So we went for a change of mindset. Um, we started asking questions with the customer and challenged challenging their setup ID. For example, is it really necessary to hide co content? Can't we work with a clear tagging system to filter on the different content? And is giving an extra training not a solution to give a deeper understanding so we uh, so the risks disappear that user will, users will send emails to different customers? And sharing content, I think this is, was one of the most important parts for the decision, is uh, more interesting for the further DXP vision. Let me explain that quickly to you. So the DXP vision, it's the product that we talked about in the beginning, where you have your CMS, uh, Motic, and your personalization tool. Um, yeah, not uh, looking for the word, connected to each other. Um, that gives you really a strength because um, by connecting those different tools and leaving the information open within this one tool, you have more information and more information means you could 
get more personalization. For example, um, in the department A, they are responsible for tourist attractions in Flanders. Then you have department B, and they are responsible for biking routes in Flanders. So if you can follow, if the department may, B knows that client X is interested in bike, in bikes, sorry, then department A could also use that information to push tourist attractions that are accessible by bike. So this way, every information is uh, interesting, and they can enrich their information together. Um, so we continued with this setup and left everything open with uh, full access to the users, and that allowed them to send newsletters, send press letters, automated forms, automated event flows, campaigns, share multiple assets. I think in general, they are using Motic at the moment since January, uh, and they are really doing it in the correct way. It's, uh, it's, it's fun for me as a Motic enthusiast to see that people, uh, a large group of people, around 50 people, are using it actively at the same time. Um, and you can really see the, the benefits of this. For example, here are some stats. At the moment, we have, since uh, these stats are from January uh, until now, we have around 195,000 contacts. Uh, that's 15,000 more than in the beginning of the setup. Um, around 2,500 assets have been downloaded, 3,500 forms have been submitted, and 450,000 emails um, have been sent, which is um, quite a lot. Uh, and that shows really that the success of this project, I think. Um, and what does the future hold? But I think it's important that we recap a little bit first um, that the, yeah, the initial setup that we wanted to do, hiding the, the content from the marketeers, is not something that's what Modic is built for. I think it's important that you use the strength of Modic, use the strength of the different tracking, um, and share that contact, uh, that information within the company. So what does the future exactly hold for this project? Um, we've come quite a few way, uh, quite a way, but we still want to do some other things. For example, I've talked about the DAM system. It's a digital asset management system that connects your um, data, uh, your data, uh, the asset database with all your pictures and your PDFs um, to your CMS. But we want to also connect it to Modix so the users can um, have the same database of assets in their CMS and in Modix and in every other tools they will use. We're also building a data studio connector so we can gather all the information because with that many people and that many emails being sent, you have a lot of information. Uh, the reporting in Modic is very good, uh, but sometimes we run into the limits. Um, so we want to make a connector that gets the data straight from the database into uh, Data Studio to see how we uh, can create reports for them um, that are synchronized with Google Analytics and everything else. We also want to start doing uh, anonymous personalization for the website using the CDP, uh, and we want to start personalizing Motic more with also the CDP info. And I think I've gone through it quite fast. Uh, we're only 80 minutes into the session, but uh, I think I've said the most important things. So please let me know if you have any questions or do you want to discuss anything about uh, the setup. I think I don't see any questions at the moment. I'll be available in the booth if you want to discuss some things of uh, Dropsolid. Um, but thank you all for attending and um, have a good rest of the time at uh, Modicum. And I hope you enjoyed. Oh, there is a question, sorry. Um, what's the best way to train big groups of people like this? Yes, indeed, I think it's a good question. Um, we've trained a lot of people in Matic, and uh, we saw that uh, most of uh, that there was also a big difference because you have loads of different people. You have people that are quite tech savvy and that know how a marketing automation works, but you also can have like people that are 50 years old and have never worked with it. So how we uh, tackled our training was we created. Um, small groups of people to train with each group having five people in them and um, we gave first bit of theoretical training when we uh, went to everything with the client and then we had some um, practical sessions so everyone got a test account in Motic and we did some exercising like okay how you can go from creating an email to sending it via campaign or how you can you create a form with a certain action linked to it and every 
exercise that we did was linked to something that they would have to do uh, in general. Afterwards, we create uh, we um, sorry. Uh, afterwards, we how do I say that? Uh, had a check in for their other questions um, to really ensure that they were they they knew how Matic could be used, uh, and we also gave them a manual for with the different use case. Uh, another question from this, uh, which then will you, will you be integrating with Matic? Uh, at the moment, we're using Cloudinary as a dem, um, so that's the, the the dem that we will be integrating with. It's also it's at the moment it's already integrated with the website, so uh, to the Matic environment is the next step. Okay. And thank you all and enjoy the rest of your day. Okay. Thank you very much um, for your session. I really enjoyed that. And I thank you all for the questions. Uh, I think I have one more question. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the biggest value of these big data motics? I think before we like call it a day. Mm -hmm. I um, think the biggest value is that with all the data that you have and also the example that I gave from with the bikes, that um, the first challenge is with all this data, how can you manage it and how can you make it feasible for the client? Because big data isn't everything. It needs to be something that you can reuse. But having all this content spread within one account uh, and having the connection with it uh, really gives you, uh, if you have clear personas, clear segments, the opportunity to to really personalize the experience for the end users. Great, great. Thank you very much, Tun, for this amazing no session. Problem. And I'm sure everyone who joined the section also feels the same way. They really enjoyed it. I'm sure speaking in mind of everyone here. And uh, it was really interesting to listen to the pitfalls with multi-tenant Motic and how we can you know, evade and avoid them. This was really very informative. And uh, catch you around, see you around as we continue in the different sections. To have a great day. Um, bye to everyone here. See you in the different sections coming up. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone.